Earlier this week, we told you that the Marvels was on track to be the worst MCU film of all time, tracking to do exceedingly poorly in a year where Disney has done very poorly with many films. We're talking about back-to-back-to-back John Carters. We're talking about Lone Rangers over and over again. And yet, it's getting worse. How bad is the Marvels right now in terms of the box office projections? Well, it's bad enough that they are going to reboot the MCU. And there is no shock that they're telling it to you now because they need to get ahead of the downfall of Captain Marvel. Hello folks, welcome back to another video where we endeavor to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. We love doing so, and we love it that you're on board with that. On board with us as well today is Andrew Caffeinated Wolf of the Ripiverse. He's the creative director and editor over there, and we're so happy to have you back again, Andrew. Hey, it's good to be back. I always love doing these with you, Pro. I, I am honored and appreciative of you asking me to be here. Absolutely. Well, let's get straight into our uh, first article today. And we're going to explain this, folks, because our job is not just to read the articles, but to explain why the articles are coming out in the first place. This out of GameRant.com. Kevin Feige reportedly plans to reboot the MCU with Avengers Secret Wars. All right, well, that's fun enough, isn't it? Okay, so let's, let's dive in, and then we'll tell you exactly why they're doing this now. Avengers Secret Wars was rumored to reboot the MCU, and Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige reportedly confirmed those plans. Avengers Endgame was the perfect conclusion for the Infinity Saga. The MCU lost popular superheroes and had to start anew. Now, Andrew, I, I don't remember that many being lost. I mean, I remember Tony Stark, but... And, and now with the multiverse, you could have all the heroes you wanted. There's a million variants of them, but <laughs> we digress. No, we don't. Resulting in a hit-or-miss new saga. However, according to a book detailing Marvel Studios' success, Feige is reportedly prepared to steer the MCU in a fresh direction. In an interview given to the Watch podcast, Joanna Robinson, the author of the recently written book titled MCU The Reign of Marvel Studios, shared a quote from Feige suggesting that Secret Wars might act as a soft MCU reboot. She says, we have a quote from Kevin Feige sort of implying that like Secret Wars will serve as a soft reboot in which they can prune everything. That's not to use a Lokiism. They'll prune everything that's not working and just keep what is working or bring back People you thought were gone forever. This revelation hints at a direction, fresh direction for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, providing an opportunity to refine the universe while keeping fans excited and engaged. All right, Andrew, here's the deal. This uh, Joanna Robinson, she's written essentially a very glowing book. We're not, we're, we're not talking about an article, okay? We're talking about a book. And she's written an entire book on it uh, that is just nonstop happiness, joy, joy, joy regarding Kevin Feige, Marvel. Uh, Ike Perlmutter, the guy that they kicked out finally, he's the bad guy, despite the fact that he told him, don't do this phase four thing. Don't do the phase five dive. He's the bad guy. Of course, Kevin Feige is the MCU savior. He's known all along what's going on. And what this is basically, she writes articles. This is, in my opinion, a giant puff piece book that gives her access now. And uh, this is a symbiotic relationship because not only does she get access now to Marvel in a way that others don't, but she's creating a headline now that gets them ahead of just how bad the Marvels is going to be. So before we poo-poo it too badly, Andrew, uh, is it time for a Marvel reboot or what should they do? Honestly, I, I think that's the only way to go at this point. And I'm usually pretty heavily against reboots and all that kind of thing and multiverses. It gets old. It's lazy writing. It, it more or less excuses you to do uh, just carte blanche, whatever you want with characters and ignore established stories, established characterizations and character series and all that. So that aside, at this point, that's kind of where the MCU is at because we don't have any of the characters that made the MCU what it was. We don't have Captain America. We don't have Iron Man. I'm not even going to bother entertaining Thor at this point because Thor has been right, bad. Thor's been a made a uh, laughing stock, right? Yeah, he's, he, he's been made yeah. a complete joke. Uh, Taika Waititi is an imbecile, doesn't know what the heck he's doing with the character, or he very much knows what he's doing and he l actually doesn't care. So at this point, you're trying to sell this uh, massive film universe, right? That has films that cost upwards of two three hundred million dollars to produce 
sometimes more in some cases, and you're not getting a return on investment. Well, why? Well, one of the reasons is because the content's bad, and people can sniff out a bad movie at this point, I think. I'd like to think. But the other part is that there's no enthusiasm for these characters that they're pushing. No, nobody watched She-Hulk. Nobody watched Loki. Nobody watched uh, Miss Marvel. Even fewer people watched, uh, what was it, Secret, uh, Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. Right? So people don't care about the stuff that they're selling. And that's that's a problem. And it's not uh, a problem. Uh, here's the other problem, audience. though, Andrew. The other problem is, let's, let's t take all the blame and let's put it on the Z-tier characters they've been using, right? Most people don't know the characters they've been even throwing at us. But I'm going to posit a, a greater concern that Marvel might have. What if it's worse than that? What if these writers are really the issue? What if Marvel has brought in a bunch of writers who they can't tell a good story? And what if rebooting it is only going to bring the favorite characters back, but sludge them through the nonsense and incompetence of bad writers. Oh, sure. Now you're just going to put good characters in the hands of bad writers. And you can absolutely do that and end up damaging a brand even further. I, I actually love that you brought that up because the, the topic of conversation here is the Marvels, right? Um, this movie does not benefit from the luxuries that the first Captain Marvel movie did. What did the first Captain Marvel movie benefit from? Well, it was sold on being an incredibly important uh piece to have an understanding of why this right. character matters. You had to go see it. Right? You, you have Required to Required viewing. It was Oreo cream filling in between the the chocolate of Infinity War and Endgame, right? That's right. Biggest That's how cliffhanger they, right. and, and the biggest finale. And they said, you need this, right? That's how they pitched it. It was great marketing, to their credit. And the movie grossed over a billion, right? So fantastic. At least that's Well, in the short term, it. though, Andrew. But in the long term... They damaged the brand by doing so. So if you wanted to make an easy billion, fair enough. They but if did. you wanted to make billions forever, then th this pulled you farther away from that goal. Well, I bring that up specifically because the character of Carol Danvers historically in the comic books actually is not a bad character. In fact, in the early 2000s, when she was under the pen of Brian Reed over at Marvel Comics, she was a fantastic character, like a B-lister, but that was the best that she had ever been. And they were on track to making her an A-list character organically. Um, I actually have well, this is the hardcover. You mean of the first you mean through of actual writing. quality? Through quality writing, Whoa. this guy Brian Reed is a fantastic writer. Um, right, that is something that the character hasn't enjoyed ever since. Um, she was unique. She was powerful, but she was flawed. She made mistakes, and those mistakes had repercussions. And she had to live with those repercussions. And that was something that what well, we just don't see in writing, especially for female characters. Right. Days. You can't have fallibility in females. That's, the, that's Marvel, the whole thing. Marvel could have had this strong, organically, naturally female character that people gravitated towards because she was charismatic. She was powerful, but she was still human. And if you put a character like this, to your point, in the hands of a good writer, you're going to get good results. You put it in the hands of a bad writer or an ideological hack, your results are going to pan out similarly. So let's talk about why they have to reboot. Because we're getting articles out like this uh, from Screen Rant by T.C. Phillips, where it becomes apparent, if you're aware of how the industry works, that this is completely and utterly unsustainable. They they don't have a choice. And that's, that's I think, what is uh, the focus of this video should be. Folks, if, you're, if you learn anything from this, we're here telling you that they are spinning this as if this was always in the plans and Kevin Feige knows best. And I'm here to tell you. They haven't had a plan and, since that game. Right. But, I'm, you know, here's the deal. They are on the mat. They are on the floor. And now they have to beg to get up and go to another round. That's what's happening here. There's, there's no glory in what's happened to them. And, and let's show it to you. Okay, so out of screen rent, the Marvel's early box office projections are 72% worse than Quantumania. Now, Quantumania was an embarrassing, an embarrassing box office. The movie lost at least tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars. It was the laughing stock of uh, the, the Marvel universe. And here we have, uh, this is unimaginable. They, they didn't see this coming. Here we have a movie that is going to drop below 
what was a black eye of Marvel by 72%. This is like watching one batter go up to bat and, you know, swings at every pitch that's thrown, even if it's out into the stands and strikes out in three. And you think it can't get any worse than that. And the next batter comes up and soils himself while trying to go to bat. That's the, this is what this is. It's so terrible. Anyway, we'll read it. And then I'm going to tell you it's actually worse. The latest box office projections for the Marvels provide a disappointing outlook for the upcoming Marvel Cinematic Universe outing, even putting it well behind Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Despite quickly evolving into a cinematic jugger juggernaut with few equals, the MCU has increasingly struggled to maintain the momentum of its earlier days since the re 2019's release of Avengers Endgame. I think that's a lot of fluff there. No offense meant, but uh, to say that there have been uh, some issues with momentum, I think is greatly underselling the position that Marvel is currently in. Oh, we don't According like, to new box office projections... Park. Disney too yeah, much. Exactly. Uh, the new box office projections with its initial domestic opening expect to generate between $50 million and $75 million. That's less than half of the $153.4 million opening enjoyed by 2019's Captain Marvel. All right, so... Let's talk about actually how bad this is, though, Andrew, because it's really bad. Folks, the mainstream media is not reminding you how much movie ticket prices have gone up, but I will. So what we did is the lowest, uh, the lowest box office for a Marvel film in the past was The Incredible Hulk from 2008. I took the average ticket price from that, that era, that year, which was somewhere around $7, and applied it to the total box office that the movie made. And we figured out the, the butts and seats, right? The number of people who participated in going to the movie to see The Incredible Hulk. Here's the actual number of people that we, we believe went and saw The Incredible Hulk in 2008. 36768802 Andrew. With the Marvels, the current ticket price, the most favorable number that we can find from the New York Times is about $11. However, we believe the, the the actual price of movie tickets is way higher than that. It's something like it's something like fourteen dollars. But we didn't use what we believe to be true. We used what the New York Times is reporting. So, with movie ticket prices having gone up four dollars, and again that's on the low end, but having gone up four dollars since uh, two thousand eight, here's how many people are going to see the Marvels according to the current box office projections, and these are the best. Remember, folks, the best box office projections. At the best, with the with the lowest ticket price. So you raise the ticket price, this gets worse. So this, I mean, this is the best of the best of the best. This is happy, happy, smile, smile, rainbow sunshine projection. This is the best Marvel can hope for. 16,085,106. That is a 57% reduction in attendance. From the Incredible Hulk 2008, which was bad enough, they never tried to do anything like that again. They completely left it away. 57% drop from the Incredible Hulk 2008 when you're talking about people going to see the film. This is, this is less than half as popular as the worst Marvel film in terms of attendance of all time. So, Andrew? Yikes. This is why they will reboot the MCU. Not because there's some creative genius back there toiling away at a secret plan. Oh, they don't have any because, creative geniuses there. Right. It's because this is this is awful. This is awful. Andrew, are you shocked at all that it's performing this badly in comparison to what we've you know, we've made fun of these films. These films were were mockery. And this film is way, way below those. Why why would I be surprised? about this <laughs> at this point like i just said captain marvel the way that they have handled her in the mcu there's there was never a chance of people being excited to see her again legitimately like real people you know people that weren't grown in pods or something well, she doesn't like have a personality that. what are you gonna there's, look there's forward to? no personality to speak of um she's just not likable and people probably still have a sour taste in their mouths from Brie Larson, despite the fact that, I guess, to her credit, she's been quiet the last few years. Which I, I, I want to come back to that in a minute, Andrew. I want to come back to that in a minute because right I see a parallel publisher. here. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're trying to sell this movie on characters people don't care about, right? People don't actually care about Captain Marvel. People cared about Captain Marvel only insofar as 
being told that she was important context for Endgame. Yes. And that context just wound up being it was really satisfying seeing Thanos punch her out of the movie. And then outside of that... <laughs> the audience we, cheered. Yeah, no, I stood up and cheered, literally. And many other people in the theater did too, honestly. It was pretty fun. Um, and then Miss Marvel, nobody watched it. Nobody cares. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Monica yeah. Rambeau, that, that's a, a horrible adaptation of the character of Monica Rambeau. It's actually a disrespect to the character. And people didn't really like WandaVision all that much. And, that and they don't the understand primary... her powers in the first place. No, they don't understand any of this stuff in the first place, to be honest. And why would they care to? So you're, you're selling a movie on three characters. Even the director. Andrew, the director says she didn't understand any of this. Of course not. The people they attach to these projects don't know squat about these characters or stories. They, they just, they see it as a, a, a quick buck. And, oh, I got to produce a or direct an MCU film. Oh, good for you. Well, it sucked and it lost money. How's right. that look on your resume? Right. They're trying to You're sell this on something people don't care about. So, of course, this is going to do poorly. So it's Andrew, set up for failure. They're ready to reboot. That's because they have no other option. But here's here's the parallel I see. I'm going to throw you... I'm, this is going to be the easiest home run you've ever had. All right. Welcome Captain back. Marvel. Captain Marvel made a lot of fans angry. She it's is, uh, like you said, just an absolutely nothing burger inside an Oreo. It's the filling that has no fill to it. And so people had to go see it. And then they realized, oh, we didn't have to go see this. You just snookered us for money. They dislike... Captain Marvel, and that's that's just the least of the reasons they dislike this character. Now, fans actually have the ability to choose whether they go see her or not, and it appears that the comeuppance stage has happened, and the fans are like, oh no, 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 no. I, will, I refuse to go see this. Andrew, there is supposedly a Ray movie in development at Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I submit oh, to I've you, heard. I submit to you that fans were drug- kicking and screaming to go watch the sequel trilogy because they cared about the original characters. And for 30 years, they had been trying to find out how this ends. And they got stuck going along with this stupid Ray character, who, by the way, we love Daisy Ridley. That's not a statement about the actress, a statement about the character and the writing of the character. And I think that what Disney is looking at right now should be the harbinger of doom, where they realize if we do this with Ray, if you thought that the Marvels was a moment for fans to kick us right in the uh, groinatal region, get ready for a Ray movie when fans will say, I will never go see something like this. What do you think? I mean, I, I don't see why that wouldn't track because they've damaged their two biggest money makers at, at the box office. That's Marvel and that's Star Wars. People have checked out. You can look at the merch sales. You can look at... Uh, the variety of merch. You can look at the number of projects that aren't film. You look at their the their watch numbers for the Disney Plus series. People don't care. People, the dam the damage has been done. The brands are severely tainted right now, and the quality of the product isn't helping. Ahsoka looked really pretty. It was the best visually in terms of the Disney Star Wars uh, Disney Plus series, but it was boring. Just, and that is the ultimate it existed. Sin. Yeah. It, people were apathetic towards it. And that's the worst part. You're seeing people not even talk about these things much on YouTube at this point. That used to be all we talked about in this space. Marvel, Star Wars, DC, kind of, when they decided to put something out. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? They, they've been in a bad spot for a while. But apathy is the worst possible thing for your brand. You, well, people just don't even care about it enough to bash it. Yes, that's, and we're you know, we're not we're here at. to we're not here to bash it because we don't take it seriously because it doesn't deserve that. Um because when you look and you see that this is coming in this much lower than the worst of the worst attended Marvel movies, you you just have to you just have to stand back in awe and be like, I can't believe that you made the the types of mistakes that brought you here. But the, uh, the reason for this video, folks, was, again, to show you the real truth of why they're rebooting. It's because they have no choice. They cannot put out films that cost 200 to $350 million, and they're getting results that you have to go back to 2008 and say, well, it's 47% or 43% of what that movie did. That, that can't happen.
That just no. that, that cannot happen. So it's not sustainable. It's absolutely not sustainable. Well, Andrew, okay. something that is sustainable is uh, what you're doing over there with the Ripiverse. So tell us all about it and tell the folks where they can find you. Well, I'm the creative director, social media manager, and one of the editors over at the Ripiverse. Uh, my first edited book is going to be Alpha Core, written by the legendary Chuck Dixon of Bat Family fame. Uh, his book is phenomenal. It, if you love Chuck Dixon's work, there's no reason to not love this book. It feels like Chuck Dixon at his best. Uh, Joe Bennett's a phenomenal artist. He, We were just talking about the Incredible Hulk. He was actually the artist on uh, Marvel's uh, Immortal Hulk for a while there, and his art was basically the thing that was selling the book. So that's a great team up there that we've got. And we've got Yaira coming up from the Saska sisters this uh, winter. That book is also fantastic. And we have a huge slate next year. Like we've, we managed to put out two books in just over 12 months. So about 13 months, I want to say we put out ISO one and two next year. We're probably looking at averaging about like a book and a quarter, a quarter. Wow. So, that's it's going to be super exciting. We've got a lot of things in the works. Um, make sure to follow not just myself on social media. Make sure you're following Eric July, our, uh, co our uh, founder and CEO. Make sure you're following the official Ripiverse the Comics accounts for all the news and updates. We've got so much coming down the pipeline. It's it's fun being excited about comic books again. I get to be a part of it. And that's absolutely that's an honor. We'll give Eric our best. And of course, uh, Kara uh, Creates is often on ah. the channel doing we stuff so uh that's right we we love our ripperverse friends and we wish you guys all the very best so excited to see uh how you guys perform as you go into the holiday season and uh i have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of people out there wanting to buy some gifts that are now isom re uh, related so folks make sure you get over there and check out andrew check him out on all of the uh, things that he's doing his link is in the uh, video description down below all right now it is time folks it is your chance to vote on how we did today so drop a like down below if you think we deserve one, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell. This is not a conversation between two people. Nay, it is a time for an entire community to come together and discuss something important, such as, is there any other option for Marvel than to drag themselves off the mat and reboot because this sucks? It just suckity suck sucks. Let us know down below what you think. Maybe you're enjoying the uh, triumph that we've been getting and you just want more of it. I doubt it. All right, folks, don't forget that the Pro Show is live this Thursday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We would love to see you there. We've got all kinds of stuff coming up. We're going to be reviewing some video games. It's the rise of the 2D platformer coming back again with both Mario Wonder and Sonic superstars out there making waves. We are looking forward to bringing those to you. We'll talk to you very soon, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. This Halloween's definitely gonna be something. Even after dead franchises like Marvel are like zombies, rotting corpses of their former glory. Dead, but still animated. I wonder, mm. are there any franchises with some afterlife qualities? <laughs> One Piece is almost vampiric, as it's uh, mm. sucking the life out of the competition. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. DC is kind of like Frankenstein's monster, with bits and pieces from everywhere and nothing is consistent. Oh, I'm the ghost of Star Wars. <laughs> you know what would be a real treat this Halloween? Checking out WDW Pro. He's got all the sweet news on his Thursday live show at 5 p.m. Eastern. Not to mention, his daily videos are a real treat. Guys, <laughs> guys, I'm the ghost of Star Wars. Get it? You know, we should go and make sure we're subscribed. Guys, guys, I'm the ghost of Star Wars. And while we're at it, we'll ring that bell to make sure we're notified. Great, let's go. Because, uh, well, we actually care about that. Let's go. Mm. Fact. Star Wars is not dead. It's haunting the staffs of Disney Plus. <laughs>